A sound bite is a simple, apparently logical or self-evident piece of information that is easily transmitted and remembered. It may be more compelling if it is exciting, horrifying or in some way vivid, the so-called vividness effect, but this is debated. Sound bites pervade communication with multiple people. They are useful for getting a message across, but often lead to distortions, which is perhaps why they are so beloved in advertising and politics. They reduce any issue to a simple, memorable concept. When the reduction of the message is truly representative, it tends to be self-evident, and we call it a statement of the obvious. Sound bites tend to bias complex issues towards one simple view or another, without justification, of course. So they should be chosen carefully. When a message contains a soundbite, it is likely that only the soundbite will be transmitted to most recipients. None of the supporting information will get through. Therefore, if there is to be a soundbite, it must be the right one. Furthermore, if what is to be communicated is not really a soundbite, no soundbites should be used because they will obscure the message. A common special case of the soundbite is the blame bite, like this. Blame bite. Man dies after drug error. Here's what really happened. A man with end-stage emphysema was admitted with a chest infection. Antibiotic treatment was started, but the patient worsened and became semi-conscious. After a lengthy discussion between the medical team and family, it was decided there was no prospect of worthwhile recovery, and the object of treatment should be changed from treating the infection to relieving suffering. The antibiotics were stopped, but the next day, one dose was given in error. It made no difference to the situation, and the man died peacefully, as expected, a few hours later. That soundbite was true. You can't argue with that. But neither can you argue that it gives a very misleading impression. Soundbites have a particular role in team working. They form the communication channel between the team and the outside world. Soundbites have a big influence on how we define never events. Suppose someone has an abdominal operation to remove a curable cancer, but the surgeon do a poor job, leaving some of the cancer behind, which spreads, becoming incurable, and consequently kills the person. This is actually not that uncommon, but it is not a never event. Now, suppose the operation is done well, but an instrument is left in the abdomen by mistake. It is seen on an X-ray and another small operation is done to remove it. This is a never event, and consequently, instrument checks are thorough and closely adhered to, making retained instruments very rare. Why is the poor operation that results in a person dying not a never event, when the retained instrument resulting in a second small operation is? The answer is in the sound bite. Surgeon's left instrument inside me is a vivid, simple and easy to understand sound bite. Surgeon's left some cancer in me is subjective, difficult to prove, and it's difficult to prove that it was even an error. That is why the more common and worse mistake is not an ever event, whereas the less common and less serious one is. You may have strong and reasonable feelings about what the priority should be in high quality surgery, and consider the never event system to be flawed. But remember the distortion is nobody's fault. It is an inevitable consequence of the power of the soundbite. Senior team members are likely to be more sensitive to the consequences of sound bites than more junior members, which can be divisive. Sound bites can lead to political distortion of clinical priorities and can make some members appear political, disingenuous and self-serving. We need to understand the role of sound bites in communication. We may not like them, but they are there. They work as they do and always will, whether we like it or not, and it's no one's fault. <laughs>